Hi, welcome to another episode of Digital Marketing Answered. Uh, I'm joined here today by Tim from Innovation Visual, and we are going to talk about how to embrace generative AI as part of your digital marketing strategy. So, Tim, take it away. How do we do it? <laughs> okay, uh, that's so. That's quite a big question. Um, I suppose start with understanding what generative AI is. Um, it's the stuff where you put in prompts, and prompts can be text, image, video, audio even, um, and you can get this kind of content back. So it's generating things, generative AI. There are other types of AI, and, and uh, for this purpose of this video, we're just going to cover kind of the generative mm -hmm. um, bit, and I think specifically around the, the production stuff. So I think it's worth, right. worth sort of setting the scene there. So written content, visual content, video even. Yes. That, that, or everything that encompasses yeah, uh, an audio. creation of content. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, so I think people want to embrace it at the moment and uh, they are sampling it and they're, and they're trying it. I think marketing leaders need to think about what they're going to do around it. And also I think we'll, we'll talk a little bit about frameworks and, 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 and stopping people doing things that they shouldn't do. Cause I think that's as important as getting people to do the good stuff. So, um, to give you an idea, um, there's a number of different applications that can make your marketing more efficient. So saving time, but put this in here, you need to make sure that you're not just creating more noise yeah. and you're actually making things which are also better. Right. I think that's crucial. So not creating content for the sake of it. No, right. no. I mean, I heard some people say, because you can create blogs 10 times faster, you should now be releasing 10 times right. as many blogs. And there's an argument to say that increasing volume is part of what you can do. Yep. But if you're just creating 10 not very good blogs, yep. you may as well not bother doing okay. it. Um, yeah. And think about the context of what everybody else is doing, because it's everybody else creating 10 rubbish blogs. Yes, exactly. In your okay. Space. So yeah. quality over quantity. Yeah. And it's just using these tools that are available to, yeah. to deliver as part of your strategy, thinking yeah. about you know, what it can do and how yeah. it can I mean, actually it, enhance. We, sh we should probably think about the, the sort of different areas where you can use generative AI yeah. practically in marketing. So um, we'll take these sort of one at a time and, and talk through them. So um, one which I think a lot of people already tried with, dabbled with, with things like ChatGPT or BARD, is um, idea generation. Yeah. So before you might have looked at some keyword research and some data, you might have looked at answer the public and things and, and tried to come up with um, ideas. You can feed in a prompt to something like ChatGPT and say, um, I'd like to write some blogs around um, dental hygiene, give me five blog titles, and it will give you five potential blog titles. Yeah. for um, that. Now, the idea generation, what it's doing is it's looking at what it's seen written. And remember, these generative AI things are, from a text viewpoint, they're just understanding what word to put after the next one, which should make sense in a what's called a, a language model. Yes. Yeah. Looking at language. So is it going to give you something entirely unique? Probably not. Is it going to give you something that you can work with? Probably is. Mm -hmm. If you ask it for five titles, should you be actually looking to go, oh, actually one and two or just that one are the ones to do it? And I think that's that's the speedy thing. So that's where you can get efficiency. So you can just say, I need to write about this. Give me five titles, 10 titles, whatever it is. And you get the one that you want to proceed with or the two that you want to proceed yeah. with much quicker than having to rack your brains or go through data and keyword data and things like that. Yeah. So that's that's the first one, the, the idea generation. I think that's very easy for people to kick off with um, and get, get using. Um, I think when you're, when you're looking at text and working with text, you can also use generative AI to edit in a way like uh, one of our clients sent us a, 
a, a big publicly available report that they had created. And I stress that I use the words publicly created report there for a reason, right? Um, it was really long. So what you can do is you can take all of that text and you can put that into an AI model and you can ask it to condense it and come out with the mm -hmm. salient points and some interesting bits. And if you're good at prompting, you can even ask it to take a, a particular view on something. And it can come back with some kind of text um, to do that. So you can use it to simplify. I mean, it might be as simple as you've written a sentence and it sounds a bit weird. You can put that in and say, can you rephrase that for me? Yeah. And it do that, but you can do big stuff and bring it down. It, it can and, do the bulk of the legwork, but you still need the human brain to sense check it, sanity check. and, and Yes. And I mean, if you did a big piece and you asked it to condense it down to from 10,000 to 2,000 words, you'd want to read it very yeah. carefully and, yeah. and, and check that out. But that's quite a useful, speedy way of, mm -hmm. of taking what you've got and translating it into something else. Um, so those are, those are really kind of easy text ones. Um, images, I think there is time saving there and money saving. Um, I'll give the positive side, so the image generation, and there are lots of different tools, and there are tools that can help you if you're creative, like in Creative Suite, do things faster. Um, there are simple tools like there are background removing tools. Yeah. So before, you know, it was easy if you're on a green screen to remove the background, but if you're being filmed with a random background you want to, yeah. or photograph a random background, hard to get rid of that. There's tools that make that very easy. But there's also AI tools which will create from a textual prompt a whole image in a style that you want. So mm -hmm. you can ask for, impre you know, I think I saw an example, old man sitting in front of a fire, um, uh, an impressionist painting or whatever. Um, and it can create things. Practically, um, if you imagine you've got your product or you want some lifestyle shots, I don't know, you want a... You want a person riding a skateboard in front of a block of flats or something like that in a skate park or something like that yeah. on a sunny day. Yes, very specific. Yeah, yeah. but that's good. Yeah. Be specific. And it can create what looks like a photo of that mm. if you want it to. Um, there are things that you should be cautious about. I uh, mentioned before the things that AI image tools have problems with. Hands, also context, um, yeah. asking it to create a... Uh, a cricketer bowling mm -hmm. um, gets confused that the fact that bowling it thinks is a different sport to cricket and things yeah. like that. Yeah. For those of you listening into North America, the cricket's a game. It's like <laughs> the forerunner to baseball. Um, but um, yeah, so so you need to you need to understand the, the limitations and, and the prompts and experiment with these things. But if you were going to go and pay for a photo shoot somewhere, mm. or just you needed some single images, and I. I know of a pack shot on a physical product that was taken back in, would have been 2003, 2004 for a uh, FMCG product. Mm -hmm. And the pack shot cost £46,000 for the one image that they yeah. wanted for the pack. It was a pretty simple image in hindsight. And I would guess that you could create that image within a few yeah. tries on the yeah. AI tool now. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So there's there's a financial gain or a saving there as well as a massive time saving. Yeah, you don't need to fly somebody out exactly. to Cambodia to yeah. go around ancient <laughs> temples and find the one with just the right silhouette for yeah, the yeah, yeah. pack shot. Okay. Um, so so yeah, and and even if you're searching stock sites and and looking at you know uh, downloading something from a from a stock site, yeah. you know, um, there's a time saving to be had there as well as the the cost saving kind of thing. So so those. Those are really good. Um, and it's amazing now what you can do with moving images. So yeah. going from still images, generative AI and video, there are things that you can do with animation and some of the tools not so easy to use and you, you probably need to have a bit of a familiarity with what you're doing. For example, um, there is a tool that you can film a human doing some movement so it could have me picking up this glass drinking from it nice and then you put that footage yep into the tool 
and you also input a, uh, a 3D model that you've generated probably somewhere else and it will basically animate the 3D model to do what I did. So you, it could be then that you've got yeah. a dragon drinking out of a glass of water. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But imagine how much faster that is than actually doing the animation yeah. from scratch. Um, you know a lot about motion graphics and things. You know yeah, how yeah. long it would take to do that. Yeah. Um, and it's a combination. So it's, it's understanding that AI might not get the fluidity or the exact sort of motion or whatever it might be or you yeah. could do a fight scene yeah um you can you can do that quite simply but then you're translating it into something yeah. else so um that's a an example of just one of the the many yeah. different things and with a, as with a lot of ai stuff it's about being able to give you a lot of options as well isn't it yeah because, you know quite simply and quickly you can spin up lots of different options different ideas different um, yeah. visuals or, or videos or whatever whereas again was impossible previously because of the cost, really, and time. Yep. Um, and so that's obviously, I would say, a key part of the strategy in that you're actually able to broaden your horizons in terms of what you're actually able to offer yep. um, you know, as a business. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, and, and the video one, you know, if people want a practical example of what, what can be done, um, the, there's the tool Synthesia where you yep. can have somebody where you just put in text and it's the talking head just reads it out and it's all lip synced up properly and you can pick your different avatars um you know if you're doing a lot of training information or you're doing a lot of standard product information you know is it does it really do any harm to do that i know mm -hmm. some people will turn their nose up at it but people used to turn their nose up at, it, at like going to a supermarket and checking out yourself mm. You know? yeah, 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 and now it's now it's commonplace. It's accepted as as normal. So, as a as a practical, you know, implementation yeah. of an AI strategy. Hey, we got this blog. Let's put it into here. We can we can get somebody to do some final edit to make it a bit more interesting. So it's not just that face talking. It's actually we're cutting in and out of some images, some screenshots or whatever, and and talk through this. And all of a yeah. sudden, you've actually got an engaging video very rapidly very quickly so i think again that's a that's a really good um use of generative ai yeah okay you can also and i'm going to come on to the content on the website and about search in a minute but um as digital marketers we use a lot of written content and things like emails in nurture or email responses um or things like landing pages they can take some time to be thought out and, and done. And I think generative AI is doing a fairly good job of creating some of those if you've got reasonable prompts or what's really good is like if you've got a landing page but you want to test a few variations, put the landing page in yeah. and, then, um, and then ask it to create you X number of variations again. You've got to go through it with detail and with a critical eye. But if it gives you five five options in a few moments yep. and you throw two or three in the bin, it's still way faster to get those other two alternatives than it is to, yep. to write them from scratch. Mm -hmm. So that's really good. Same things with emails. And I think if you can if you can create like nurture emails with value at scale, so they're still good. Because don't just create nurture emails and then yeah. you know put them in there and they're, they're rubbish. Yeah. They've, they've got to be good. You can then do more personalization. Yeah. And there's, there's a whole string of the AI stuff doing personalization. I don't think we'll try and cover that on, no. on this video. But you've got a way of creating that content that then can be utilized within, within personalization. Yeah. So okay. um, that's a really good thing. And then I suppose extending from that comms bit with the landing pages and the email mm -hmm. you've got chat yes yeah yeah wow chat mm. <sighs> it's like it's it, so it's so it's going to be so good i yeah. think there there's some things which aren't so good now but you know the voice synthesization yeah which has been refined brilliantly by the likes of google and amazon with their um yeah. uh, assistants um the effectively putting a voice over the top of a chatbot, yep. but the chatbots themselves. It's, yeah. it's and 24-7. 24-7. That's the thing, isn't but, it? But the way you can be better 
better more of the time. Like yeah. we've all called a call centre and got the person who's clearly having a yeah. bad day, who's not very helpful <laughs> or, or doesn't know what they're doing or whatever. With chat-based connection, you will be really connected to the best person, I think, um, most of the time. Yeah. And so from a scaling viewpoint as well as a quality viewpoint, I think that's that's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. But it's going to be quite... Well, it's going to be pretty devastating for those people that work in call centres mm. because they're, they're going to go. Yeah. Um, but from a consumer viewpoint, they're going to be like, well, this is great. I can I can talk to this person on chat and, and rather than waiting for the live person to yeah. catch up because they're running like three or four chats at the same time, you've just got the AI-powered bot giving you all the answers with the whole company background of information yeah. and all the responses, you know, if this, then do that kind of thing. And and if you haven't heard it before, then mm -hmm. uh, this is the thing. AI can then figure out what to yeah. do. Yeah. So it's not like just predefined lines. Yeah. If it's this, press one. If yeah. it's this, press two. Yeah. Um, and it continually evolves and learns. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's, it's yeah, yeah. a never-ending expansion yeah. of the knowledge, which you, yeah. you can't replicate with the team of humans. So, yeah. yeah. And, and good marketing leaders understand that they should be understanding what's going on yeah. in customer service. Yeah, yeah. And I guess it's also the way that also connects up so that the AI driven chat then connects up with all other aspects, other channels within on your website, for example, yeah. um, and being able to provide relevant content, some of which will have been generated by AI. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. quite well, amazing. Well, I mean, let's, let's take a moment to talk about content that goes on the website, yeah. non-landing page at this point, uh, the AI. So there are going to be people going, well, you're a digital marketing agency. Do you use AI to write content? Should you do that? Should you not do that? The jury is is so spread, or the the, mm -hmm. the opinions are so spread from do it, it doesn't matter, to absolutely don't do it, it will kill your SEO, kill your search rankings. Yeah. There's every opinion in the middle. What I would say is that some of the tool some of the search engines, I think, are going to know, I mean, Google being, they're going to know yeah. what's created by AI. There are some tools to disguise it, but they're going to have a pretty good idea because these are the people who are spending a lot of money yeah. on the AI tools, so they're going to know. But step behind that into what are the search engines trying to do? They're trying to return the best possible results to the searcher so it's a quality thing and i think the problem is that if people are relying too heavily on ai to write website content it's it's thin it's recycling yeah. what the ai has previously seen and stuff like that it's not new it's not unique it's not super helpful and and it doesn't matter then whether the AI wrote it or whether it was just a person who wrote it. If it's not very good content, it's not going to rank very well. And if you put lots of not very good content on your site, you're going to harm your site. Yeah. Because it's going to go, yeah, loads of drivel on there. Yeah. Which has always been the case. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. So but I think, they'll, I think there'll be more people getting that wrong. Yeah. Okay. I think there'll be a lot more people going, well, it's just a bit, let's just get more blogs on. The more blogs, yeah, the better. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there is a, you know, there's a bigger thing, you know, about evolution of search, but that's probably yeah. uh, a separate conversation as well. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that, I think there's, those areas are the, are the ones where generative AI is, is really hitting the mark at the moment for, for helping. Um, marketing deliver on their strategies. Yep. Okay. And that all sounds really positive uh, yeah. and, and really good and very exciting, really, for the future in terms of how we s scope out these digital marketing strategies. But I know for a fact there are some downsides, there are some risks, there are some yeah. limitations, there's things, dangers people need yeah. to be aware of. So, can we run through some of those? Yeah. I, I mentioned right at the start that marketing leaders need to put some frameworks in place. Yeah. And they need to put some guidance in place for the, the people in their teams. So you need to have some rules on how to use this stuff. Okay. And I don't mean ones to suffocate innovation, but 
getting AI to generate content and then just simply cutting and pasting it onto yeah. a website should be banned in your organization. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Um, so taking that as one level, you need to then think about incrementally, what, it, what are your rule sets? And it's going to depend a little bit on what your organization is, how big you are, how complex you are. But things like checking and validating what's being created, you know, should should it go to somebody else for approval? Should you be marking stuff as generated by AI, mm. for example? You know, um, you've got to really think about that in an organization. So the, the validation and checking is important because we had a, a creative agency that that we don't commission, mm -hmm. but our client had commissioned to do some creative work. And um, they sent through some images. They didn't say where they'd come from and the fact they were generated by AI. But our team went, okay, uh, don't think we should use these. We've got people who don't have the right number of fingers, and <laughs> yeah. even the right number of arms. Right. You know, it's a pretty major thing if you're putting up, you know, oh, here's a great shot to put on yeah. your social media ads. Yeah. By the way, did you notice that the bloke in the back's only got one arm yeah. and the person in the front's only got three fingers? Mm. Um, you do, you've got to have rules to catch that. Yeah. Because what will happen is if you put that stuff out, you will get ridiculed. Yes. Consumers will just think you're just creating rubbish. And also the fact is, if you can't pick up stuff that's that bad, you're also not picking up whether what's going out is good. Yeah. And in fact, what should be going out is great. Don't just use AI to create more of the same. Yeah. Use AI to go, let's lift our standards because there's going to be so much noise out there yeah. that the people that win are the people that focus on quality over quantity. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's so the rule thing is, uh, I think, the starting point for the problems. But we should highlight the, the use of things like text generative AI. You have to be careful um, about uh, effectively... It made up stuff. Yep. So um, they call it AI generated fiction and it's pretty convincing. And the AI won't tell you. The AI won't say I've made this up. Right. So um, uh, head of computer science at a um, UK university in a lecture said um, he asked one of the AI chatbots for five really good pure maths books recommendations. And he got five really good maths books back written by professors and doctors and mm. things like that. They were all made up. Yeah. yeah they yeah. had very convincing names. Um, I think the the New York Times asked about um, when AI was first mentioned and one of the chatbots said that it was uh, an article um, talking about how technology would be able to learn and, and, and do things. Um, from a lecture at Dartmouth College in 1956. That lecture never took place. <laughs> yeah. That article was never published. Yeah. Right? right. They, like those things, people go, wow. Yeah. But you've got to be really careful because it does make stuff up. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, remember, these are language models. They are predicting what should be said after the next word. Yes. Right? They are not intelligent and they are not a search engine. They're not going out and searching, or certainly not at the moment. They're not going out and going, you know, based on all of this, this is the knowledge. It's, it's, it's thinking about words and language and yeah. giving you an answer. Okay. Yeah? yeah. So that's, that's really, really important um, that you've got to fact check. And I think that um, that's, really, that's really the sort of the downside, as long yeah. as you're policing the whole thing about... And there was also thinking a lot about bias as well. I saw some stuff about AI yes. bias. But again, the the machines are own, they're learning from what they the information they have and fed by whoever is yeah. creating that machine. So yeah, it's um, I suppose inevitable that there, there will be bias, yeah, subconscious or conscious. But again, you've got to sense check that and you've got to be aware of it. Yeah, I mean it's difficult for us as marketeers to really know the level of bias yeah. or or what the models they've been. Um, they've been trained on. One of the funniest examples I heard of the of a model being trained, mm. and the, this 
gives an example of it's only as good as the data it's been trained on yeah. is um, they were training a, uh, a medical AI, so machine learning, give it a big data set, um, tell it what the answers are, and then it, it creates its own algorithm to assess things and basically comes up with something which then when you put in um, data that it can give you an answer, predictive answering yeah. or whatever, right? So it's a medical one. So they gave it um, a whole set of images and it's to detect, then what they wanted was an algorithm to detect skin cancer. So loads of images of skin yeah. and basically moles and melanoma and things like that and, and have a look at it. And so it the, the AI took all the um, data, looked at thousands and thousands of images and um, basically created an algorithm um, to detect skin cancer. And the defining factor of how to know whether the image was of a skin cancer or not, whether it had a ruler in. <laughs> oh, right. Because the image of the... what they right. forgot to do yeah. was all the images of the skin cancer oh, yeah. happened to have a measure a in it. Yeah, yeah. So the AI went, well, you can always tell which one's skin uh, cancer because there's a ruler in it. Yeah, logical. But, yeah. And I think that just goes to show the intelligence... Yes. It's only as good as yeah, yeah, yeah. what you put in. So, yeah, that's a good yeah. example. Yeah. Okay. So bias, yeah. We don't know what it's trained on, yes. but you do need to be Yeah, you got to be careful. Okay, so in summary then, um, we've got plenty of sort of pitfalls or things to be uh, wary of, but um, at the, the same overwhelmingly, time... Overwhelmingly, there are pitfalls yeah. and you need rules, but overwhelmingly, it's positive. Yes. You, and you've got to start using it. Okay, yeah. You have to start using it. Okay, so if we were to put it in summary and wrap up, um, yeah. when it comes to generative AI, using it as part of your digital marketing content strategy, yeah. um, you've got yeah, generating ideas, yeah. you've got creation of content, whether it's written or visual, such as video yeah. or images. Yeah, um, you've, you've got the condensing of the written yep. stuff as well. Sure, yeah. okay. Um, live chat also, a yeah, really big definitely. part of that. Um, yeah, okay. creating better, creating better quality yes. um, content, I think, because you've, you've gone over images and video yeah. and, and written, but it's important to remember the target should be better, yeah. not simply more. Yes, yeah. I think that's the overarching kind of sort of message from today is that yeah, it's about quality, not quantity, and it's not just creating content for the sake of it just because yeah. you can. You've, Absolutely. Got, you've still got to think about what you're doing and the objectives. Yeah, and 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 I think that... The reason why is it's for efficiency, it's to improve the quality, and it's to improve your customer's experience. Yeah. Think about those three things as the principles. This is why we're going to embrace AI. And we've talked very much tactically today about delivering on mm -hmm. like a, a set strategy. What we haven't covered, and, and we'll do uh, another time maybe, is talk about how, how AI is moving goalposts, moving the whole con concept, the, the landscapes yeah. with, with, within we are operating, whether that be a digital marketing landscape of th things like organic search, or whether that be a landscape for a, for a, a product or a market. Yeah. Um, because... This is a, this is a video about the tactical application of AI, and I and I absolutely strongly believe that marketing leaders need to be doing that, but they do need to be thinking, you know, the the levels above that as well, yeah. okay. because that's you know that people are going to look to them for leadership at this yeah. time. Okay, well, great stuff. Thanks very much. Um, I think hopefully that's been of use. Um, yeah. I think it's been a really interesting chat. Um, as always, please like and subscribe uh, to our channel. And uh, look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Digital Marketing Answered. And don't forget to subscribe also to the podcast as well as watching it on YouTube if you're not already listening to this on the podcast. So thank you very much as well for all your input so far.